Hello YouTube, Thomas here, and this is five things that all fine arts students should know if you're interested in painting. Now, one thing that contemporary art schools or universities lack is training in traditional methods, or you could say the technical side of painting. They do not teach anything. Uh, I mean, I did a painting BA at University of the Arts London, and I think in the whole, in terms of formal teaching time, we had like one technical session from the technician, which was like a thing, I think that seemed to be specific to my university because we had like a kind of special technician, he was really good. But in terms of like technical advice, practical advice, with the exception of any uh, questions that you ask from tutors or students, there is zero in the curriculum in terms of, you know, whether that be a painting lesson or anything like this. So a lot of us, uh, particularly in first year, we do not know what we're doing. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is painting mediums. I was introduced to painting mediums during my foundation year and I didn't really get what they were. I just thought, you know, you just mix your turpentine or your whatever paint thinner as a medium with your oil paint and then you just paint and then you wait for it to dry and then blah 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 and that's that's oil painting end of story but <laughs> how i was wrong <laughs> so um a painting medium for those who don't know is a special oil or liquid that you mix with your paints to give it different qualities so for example oil paints take a long time to dry uh, certain painting mediums will speed up the drying process literally make it overnight so you can work on multiple layers very very quickly uh, other other mediums will change the um, the drying time to a longer drying time but the finish that they give such as maybe a thicker texture or they are uh, they will show your brush strokes to a greater extent and not smooth out the paint so much they will give these different kinds of qualities to your paint now when it comes to these mediums you want to keep the fast drying mediums on the first layer or the lower layers and then the slower drying mediums on top of those fast drying mediums if you're going to use multiple mediums uh, because if you have the slow drying ones underneath and then you work on top those ones underneath are not dry they're still moving around and it will cause cracks on top of uh, yeah it will basically cause your painting to crack now as a student uh, or fine art student I would advise you to look at three mediums you can also mix and match them to kind of suit your own kind of I guess painting style so I would advise number one liquid uh, as a fast drying medium I would also advise linseed oil and stand oil as the slower drying mediums but with these three alongside what which whatever paint thinner you're use, using such as turpentine bear in mind I'm speaking about oil painting here I'm not so familiar with mediums when it comes to acrylics but I will do a more in-depth video uh, on this in the future I do plan to so I will put the links in the description to the mediums that I use uh, if you're interested in checking them out. So point number two, this is a, might seem an obvious one, but your palette. Oh, my heart hurts just th thinking about some of the palettes that you used to see uh, in the studio. Um, and I'm talking like, I don't know, tiny constricted paper disposable palettes uh, or like really messy just disgustingly like dried on paint which you just keep piling on top of just remember that your palette the state of your palette is going to reflect in your work so if you've got this dirty palette that you keep unorganized and messy and foul your your painting is going to be dirty and unorganized and foul or at least some of it will be um, because of the fact that number one, people don't clean their palette properly. And number two, people don't clean their brushes properly. So my advice, my advice, get a glass panel. A glass panel, uh, I don't know, like a fridge shelf or something like this that has a smooth, glossy surface that is easy to clean. You can scrape off excess paint with a palette knife, wipe it down afterwards, very easy to clean. You can even spray paint the back of it if you want like a, a matte color that you can, um, identify your colors and tones uh, to a greater extent but oh please just use a clean palette because it will really benefit your work like just staying tidy 
organized, having something clean and quite big to work off. It will give you space and consistency and cleanliness in your work, okay? Please. So point number three, and this is, seems to be another obvious one, but like I need to uh, <laughs> expand on this, but that's uh, brushes. Number three is brushes. Now, I speak for myself as well because I've made stupid kind of mistakes when it comes to brushes, even recently. Now, my advice is really have a look at the brushes you're using, whether they're compatible with the materials that you're using. Because some oil painting mediums, they will destroy certain fibers when it comes to brushes and your brushes will deteriorate and so will the mark making in your work. So I'm going to, I'll show some kind of extra footage right next to me here or wherever I'm going to put it um, of what happened to some of my brushes as I'm using them because sometimes I'll look at a brush, I'll be like, oh, it's so soft and nice. And then I start using it with oil paint with certain mediums and then it destroys the brush. And I'm like, why is my brush being destroyed? Is it the way I'm cleaning it? No, it's because of the mediums that I'm using and the brush isn't even really made to be, yeah, it's, it's not, the, the function is not there basically. So have a look at the materials that your brushes are. You can, whatever shop you're buying them from them, whatever the packaging, go to an art shop, uh, obviously the, the staff around there tend to know what is compatible with what. So just ask these questions before you <laughs> splash the cash on the brushes because it will save you money, it will save you time. And also, please clean your brushes properly, please. Because not cleaning your brushes properly is also something that ruins them. And the, the, the lower the quality of your brush, you know, obviously depending on what kind of marks you want to make, but you need some good quality soft brushes for whether it be blending different sizes and not have hard jaggedy ugly dirty brushes that you're trying to you know use to create good work and then at the same time they're not being clean and to, to clean your brush get the excess paint off with a rag or tissue then use brush cleaner or turpentine or paint thin or whatever you're using to i don't know get a further amount of paint off then after that, get washing up liquid and then wash the rest up with washing up liquid. Then if you're not gonna use that brush for a long time, put some hair conditioner on it and that will keep the bristles soft as well because otherwise they will become a bit hard because there's still some material left on it. So please, please just follow my advice. Don't be lazy when it comes to cleaning your brushes and your palette because it, will, it really will affect your work. Number four, um, I'm gonna speak about the quality of paint. That you're using you really want to work towards an artist quality paint if you're serious about painting so i understand everyone has different financial situations and not everyone can just afford artist quality paint off the bat but what i know everyone can do is put money to the side and slowly work up with whether it be you get the main colors of your palette or the the brightest colors or the strongest pigments you can work one color at a time towards building up that, that palette of colors uh, to an artist quality standard paint. Because, you know, I feel like there are so many students who are happy to splash a hundred pound on a night out, but yet when it comes to investing in their own materials, they moan and groan about what everyone else has when it's just like, hmm. And by all means, uh, I'm very grateful that my dad helped me, uh, supported me before my foundation year. He um, bought me some uh, artist quality paints. But then throughout my university degree, I had a part-time job and I was working hard and not spending money on dumb stuff to help maintain that. So, you know, there's, there's a balance. You can obviously, if, if people have that um, support from their parents, then that's great. Um, you know, don't feel like you're entitled or anything. Um, because at the same time, we should be working hard for our materials and progressing uh, as, as an artist. So, buy good paints. I'm gonna leave links in the description again to the paints that I use, the artist quality paints that I use. Uh, I also might leave the, uh, the kind of the palette that I use, generally speaking, in my work. So, my fifth and final point is gonna be a more of a general positive note. Um, my heart stopped hurting thinking about <laughs> <laughs> what I used to see in the studios. But um, my last point is to do with patience. Now, I understand 
that when it comes to your work, a lot of us are gonna always feel crap. We're gonna feel down, we're gonna feel like we're not progressing, we're gonna feel like compared to everyone else, we're rubbish. Sometimes you stop believing in yourself and you have these negative thoughts. Have patience and just keep working. Step by step by step, you're gonna get closer to something that you are more satisfied with, but it takes hard work, it takes perseverance, and you know, no one got anywhere just by sitting back and being negative and kind of down about their work. So understand that having those, you could say, um, criticizing yourself and it, this is a good thing. It means you wanna move forward, but don't let it stop you, okay? Don't let the negativity and the whatever that comes at you, get rid of the negativity take the criticism in a positive way, whether it be you criticizing yourself or others giving you advice, um, and move forward, move forward with it. So, and at the same time, patience in regards to let the, let the uh, layers of your paintings dry and try to do things, you know, in, a, in an organized fashion. This is also a, a good way to go about painting and realize that it takes time to understand the material and get good at using it. It's taken me years, so just have patience, slowly move forward, and do not compare yourself to the others around you. Don't compare yourself, you're in a different situation. It doesn't matter whether someone's better than you or worse than you, do not compare yourself. It is a pointless exercise. If anything, if someone is better than you, go and learn from them, uh, go and talk to them, ask them what they do, and if you're a weird introvert like me, then stand silently and watch them closely like a hawk. Um, and with that, I will kind of conclude this video and say, please comment below or message me on Instagram if you have any questions. Uh, check out my other videos. I have a, now a growing library of uh, videos to do with kind of helping artists, young artists, art students. Uh, thank you for beeping at me, Mr. Truck. But yeah, check out my check out my other uh, videos there. There might be helpful information for you there. Uh, follow me on Instagram, and I got I got TikTok now. Yeah, I make good stuff on TikTok. Um, but uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate all the support, and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more artistic com content information and generally speaking positive painting vibes. So thank you.